Okay, any more questions? Okay. Need the mic? Yes, I do. Okay, sure, sure. <laughs> Got to ask you. Thank you. I just wanted to say I went for Urban Express. Okay. But I was in the back. I was, you, you I was, was in the back? I was in the videos and stuff. Oh, all right. You're still putting your ass up, though. All right, good. Okay. All right, so um, my name is Chanel. I'm the owner of All Eyes on the 215. I have a studio in Southwest Philly, a film studio. And I have put it on all the film websites. But I'm not getting any traction yet. What else can I do to get movies? Because I know Creed just came to the city. And I was figuring that my studio would be the perfect space because it's in a warehouse for Creed the film. But I don't know how to get in contact with the movies that I see coming in to show them my space. What can I do? Have you joined IMDb Pro? Oh, yeah. So, this is a good secret for a lot of musicians also. I, everybody knows IMDb, Internet Movie Database. There's IMDb Pro where you can actually pay, I think it's 150 bucks per year. And they give you all the information from all the movies. For example, if you're an artist, you can find out the music supervisors where you have all the movies. If you're looking for locations, location scouts are on there. So, it's a matter of being proactive. It's not waiting, oh, it's in town now, we're trying to find somebody. They already found a person. So a lot of times like, what I try to do, like with my artists, something like that, I would say don't look for the biggest movies out. Look for some of the smaller act. And, and you, won't, you won't know them. So what I would even say is find an actor who's made like a B or C list actor. Look them up and see what's in pre-production. Find out what movie it is, and then do research on that movie, see where the shooting, see who the supervisor is if you're an artist. Try to figure out the back door, because no one really does that. Most artists, everyone's kind of being, no, people aren't really proactive enough, and that's a good way to do it. Absolutely. Anybody you know, else? Like to see your content too. We have kind of love to see it too. Have you signed up for the Philadelphia film? Or, or I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, there's a message to her. She just pulled up her phone. Oh, yeah. Um, for, for the SAG and Ashburn, just look up. Did you go on to the uh, website? Did you Google the website and look on there? There, there should be a contact, but uh, most likely for, for uh, I'm a part of SAG and Ashburn. And uh, I was on the Fresh Press of Bel Air. I did two episodes on there, and then, you know, from that from that point, they'll bring you into the union. Once you do uh, two or three uh, uh, extra positions on on one of these shows, so you can do that. But um, it's also like I think fifteen hundred dollars to to pay to be a part of it. So yeah. I heard I heard it was three thousand. Yeah. They moved up three thousand. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it's, it's worth it though. It's, it's worth it's worth spending the money. If you're gonna be in Jersey, Philly, it's fifteen hundred. If you're in New York and um, Jersey, well, I because I was looking it up recently because I'm actually starting my own consulting modeling consulting agency. I'm in the process of getting that all together now, and I was looking up because this is information I need to get from up. So in order to, you need three waivers. If you're going to do background work, you're going to need three waivers, and um, and you do, you can get it with just one waiver, depending on what production it is. Mm -hmm. And um, it's three for for me because I'm in Jersey, so it was fifteen hundred for Jersey to Philly, but it's best to pay the three thousand from New York and Jersey or the whole thing because then you don't have to worry about just being in Philly and Jersey. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guys in here. Only one guy asked a question. Alright. We got we got Michael Lego holders in here, bandages in here. Alright, come on. Come on, I know y'all got questions. Come on. Alright. I see what I see who first. Oh, we good though. Oh, we good, we good. Alright, so I'm in Jerry's. I'm um, Mr. Ruskin doing a lot of things. I just got a question now because I'm about to start a wedding. Because I see a lot of people that's like, it's just like entertainment. Like, you know, I love walking directs. So I'm figuring if they can do it. Like, and I'm contacting a lot of people with features. What are you supposed to benefit when you pay for a feature? What are the benefits you're supposed to pay for a feature? The benefit of features is exposure. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different. It's, it's a lot of different ways you can you go about it. Um, actually, me personally, I've never paid for a feature, only because I was determined to just outrap everybody. So um, I was around Gilly the Kid, Beanie Siegel, 
and I was around all these guys all the time, and I would just go in, shake their hands, say what's up, and then do my music. That's a part of the fear thing. You said a lot of people will come to the studio and kick everybody out. Oh, no, man, I can't rap in front of nobody. How you gonna be a rapper if you can't rap in front of nobody in the studio? How you gonna rap in front of 40,000 people? So I would love when a lot of people was in the studio, and most of the times Gilly and Benny Siegel was in the studio, and I would be trying to hurry up and get my work done. So when they, when they play it back, they would be looking at me like, damn. And that's what eventually happened. Um, Gilly came over to me one day and was like, yo, you, you be having some shit. I was like, uh, well, whenever you're ready, you know what I'm saying? You can have one song. And he did, uh, I think it was the Superman remix with me. The benefit of that was Gilly had thousands of fans more than I did. I was just in my hood with it. People only knew me just in my hood, in a couple blocks radius. I was the hottest thing in my hood, but when you stepped out of my hood, they didn't really know me. So when I did a feature with him, I started getting, gaining more followers than I did a feature with Cassidy, then it was Freeway, then it was Vandy C going, then it was, when you start doing those features, um, you know, you, 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 my objective is to steal your fans. That's my objective. I do a song with you, you can be buddy buddies like boxing. Everything's cool, everything's everything's fun and dandy. But when we get on that track together, I'm trying to murder you on that track, and I'm trying to make your fans say, damn, that boy black. You know what I'm saying? Did this, that, and the third. So sometimes, if, if you can't take it that way, then you might be, I don't stop people from saying you shouldn't care for a feature because that's just invested in yourself. If you know you got a project and you know, don't just feature it because it's the person and you like them and you happy to hear him on the track, pick your best project, pick your very best song that you feel like you like, that you let everybody else hear, and they saying this this is the one for you, and then you go get your feature um, according to your account, how you can afford it, the way I'm having your bank account set up, and, and, and get that feature. So, and make sure when you get that feature, you tell that person, I'm paying you. Because a lot of people will pay people and these arrogant ass rappers walk in and act like they just doing you a favor. That rapper worked for you. When you pay me for a feature, I work for you. So at the end of the day, you can say, listen, I got this, that, and the third for a feature, man, but I need, I need you to jump on this song and I also need to see you promote this joint on Instagram and Twitter at least once or twice. You feel what I'm saying? If they say no, then you don't want that feature. Because your object is to get your music out there and get it heard from, from people more. So your features are worth it. It's just like an investment to yourself. Most of us um, in this room probably own something because one of our friends told us about it, right? So everything that you wear, everything that you listen to is almost an endorsement. So if he, if he told me something's hot, now I gotta go check it out to make sure it's hot, and then I'm gonna hit him up like, yo, that was hot, I gotta tell my man Jimmy about it, right? So that's what a feature is like. A feature is like getting an endorsement from somebody who everybody else approves of. So if Bean said you hot by rapping on the record with you, he's basically saying you hot. So now everybody who like Beans is going to be like, yo, the boy, the new boy with Beans is crazy. Or the new boy that, that's with Meek or, who, or whatever, whoever's in South is hot. The moment you do a record with him, you automatically are introduced to his audience. So that's, it's important to do that. So if you're spending money for it, spend it wisely. Yeah. And, and one more thing too, I come from a music distribution perspective because I have, a, I have 350 artists I distribute and we have a lot of features. The advantage too is you have to remember that the music industry now is nothing but a search engine. If, so if you go to iTunes, you search. If you go into YouTube, you search. So people are searching for that feature. If you want a feature, people are going to search for it. If you want to pay for it, you got to make sure it's someone, a name that someone's putting into a search engine to pop up, and then their name will pop up with you. You'll pop up with their song, and that's how the streams come up. Because now there's stream play there's playlists. Mm -hmm. So if someone puts in an artist and they create a playlist, your song will pop up on their playlist because they search for that artist. So that's the strategy too: is make sure to be they're searchable. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, what I would like to add, it don't just stop there when you pay for the feature. You have to really put in the money as far as promoting it. Yeah. Because at that point, when you pay for a feature, okay, you say, okay, I've got the artist. And you have to make sure that that artist, like, like Black said, you have to make sure, because you have a lot of arrogant artists, that you pay them money, and they don't even want to post 
when they did with you on their page. So you had to talk about that ahead of time. Like, listen here, listen. I want you to be on this feature. Here's the money you asked for. But you have to, I, I, I'm asking you to post my promo with you on your page for at least twice. At least twice. You know what I'm saying? If they're not doing that, then what's the problem? I used to, you know, when, when, I, when I did a show, I paid, because I don't pay for a lot of features in the city. And that's one thing I want to say to a lot of artists. A lot of artists say, well, why should I do your show with Plexa? You ain't paying me. And what, I'm, what I say to artists is, it's the difference between being an artist and a hairliner. I'm not going to pay you to be a hairliner unless you can bring as a promoter, because I'm a promoter as well. A hairline is being paid to bring people that you don't even know to my door to pay me to come see you. And if you can't do that, I'm not going to pay you. But I will put you on my show so you can get exposure from my shows. So that's a big difference from a lot of people that do this thing. But back to my point, when you're paying a, um, a feature, make sure that they're willing to promote you on their page. If they're not, don't even, don't even do the money. Because they're not respecting you as an artist as far as what you do. And you're paying them because they're working for you as an artist. And then you have to put the money in it. You have him, okay? Put your own money in to promote your stuff on every network, every outlet you can put it on. At that point, you're the record label. You know what I'm saying? You're the promoter. You're the record label. Don't rely on him to do it because he's famous. Now, at this point, you're the a &R. You're the promoter. You're the marketer. You give him that money, then you take it and say, all right, I got him on my track. I got what I need from you. Now I'm going out here to Who Mag Magazine. I'm going out here to Urban Celebrity. I'm going out here to, to ThisIs50.com. And I'm going to spread it out. And they're going to see, the, the world going to see me on, on the track with this guy right here. And I'm going to get the most for my money. Yeah. And one more thing real quick. This is where you get slick, too. This is where you get slick. Once you get the song done, see, so put it on YouTube or Facebook. You target, you target their audience. Because you can create YouTube ads and target their audience and place that video, a little, like a little 15 second commercial of that song in front of that artist's videos. So that's how you really steal their audience too. And put your name first. No, no, not your name. Not your name. Because that's what I said. A lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people, um, a lot of people they be like, yeah, it's me, it's me, me, me. But a lot of people might not know you. So when I was coming up in the game, if I did a song with Cassidy, I put Cassidy featuring Black Panera, even though it was my song, my beat, my, I did the hook, the verses and everything. He might have did one verse, but I still put Cassidy versus Black Panera, Beanie Siegel versus Meek Mills versus uh, Meek Mills featuring Black Panera. I did that because I knew more people would search these guys at the time until you get to the point where you can put it down and just put my name featuring whoever, unless it's a bigger artist, unless it's, it's not local no more. I would still do the same thing if it was a, somebody higher level than on the, um, of an artist. Let me real quick. I want to pray. Just really quick, because I know a lot of people like, when you, when you do a lot of features, people have different tracks. So if you're featuring somebody from the South, and you're not even really from the South, or Southern, rap, or doing Southern music, when you're featuring an artist in front of it. The West Coast or the South or from New York, those are different people who probably have never even see or hear or you know, be in touch with. But that's what a feature does for you. Little Uzi Burke popped off because he featured with Rich the Kid. He had that feature with Rich the Kid, plugged in the Rich the Kid, same audience. That's why the style is similar, but Uzi's way big. Yeah, that, that feature put him damn near over the top. A feature could do a lot for you, like they said, if you promote it right, put it in the right content, put it in the right places. I like the fact that um, Robbie had said it's pretty much a search engine, right? Because you, you search Amazon for any product that says people who brought this product also brought similar, you know, and it's the same sort of thing. And someone, you listen to this, we think that you're going to also like this kind of music. So, um, you know, SZA is one of, my, one of my favorite artists. And she had a lot of dope features. You know, she got featured on a Rihanna joint. Rihanna's name was first. People were like, who's this? You know, it, she got featured on a whole lot of stuff. But she tapped into those audiences, and, and the search, you know, popped off for her. So people started download, downloading her music. And that was before she was even nominated for autograms and stuff like that. So when you're thinking about how you're putting yourself out there, this is more than just for the artist. You know, this is about whether you're looking for, you 
you know, you've got a venue and you're trying to get more movies. Well, what else could you put out there? Uh, or what else could you do? What kind of events can you do that attracts location uh, directors? You know, if you're watching a movie, look at the credits. Who is the lo location scout for that movie? Because when I was in high school, actually when I was in college, I really wanted to be a journalist. And that's how I even got into the whole media entertainment thing. So I, I scrolled through all the magazines that I looked for. I looked at their, what they call the mass set. It's kind of like the credits of a magazine. And I saw who was the um, marketing director for that magazine. I saw who was the research director. And I hit them up because those are some of the people that don't get hit up as much as the program director who's you know, responsible for putting the music on the airwaves. So, Hit them up, see where they're going. I mean, it sounds a little creepy, but you know, you stalk them, see where they're going. They're going to be hanging out on their Instagram page, and that's how you kind of network because they have to have confidence in you too um, to even put that feature on. If they think that you're going to pop, if they see that you have talent, then that's also that vote of confidence. And, and one last thing I'll say is the Breakfast Club when um, Charlamagne the guy had the little beef with Monique. Y'all familiar with that? Yeah. You know, what, what do you do the next day? He put, posted a picture on Instagram of him and, and Oprah. Right. So, you know, that, that was a, his feature right. in a way. So, just be strategic about the way you think about it. All right, we got another question over here. So, as an independent recording artist, now it's different when you're in the industry and when you're independent, but um, as an independent recording artist and producer, what's your advice to getting placements in movies? Now, uh, independent movies. Independent movies? Yeah, what's your advice to get my music as an independent producer and artist into independent films? Yo, it's crazy that you, you asked that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just did a movie, uh, I'm the music supervisor for Lee Daniels' new movie coming out this summer. And uh, this is a good friend of mine, he actually did the lead song, lead song in the movie. It's uh, directed and written by a good friend of ours named Christine Crocus. We actually in two weeks going to the uh, Tribeca Film Festival in New York. Yes. Said, but I'm actually a music supervisor. And maybe six months ago, a woman reached out to me. She said she was looking for music from Philadelphia. She loved the Philly sound. You know what I'm saying? She was in Hollywood. So she Googled Philly music and she said, your name popped up 15 times. She said, all I kept saying was Jimmy the same. So she said to her partner, I'm going to reach out to him because I like his name. And she said, I like the same. So she literally reached out to me, emailed me, and said, I, I do movies with Lee Daniel, John Legend, and Hollywood. I, I want some music from Philadelphia. I'm like, I can get you some music from Philadelphia. So she sent me an email. I got her 50 songs the next day. Like, not a week. I just called everybody I knew. I said, yo, send me some songs. You know what I mean? She called me back two days later and said, my email is filled with all these songs from Philly. We in Hollywood listening to it right now. And I was like, okay, and I didn't want anything. I just did it for her because I just was trying to put Philly on. Then I sat back and thought about it. She said, listen, so she paid everybody. The movie's coming out this summer. It's called, uh, it's called uh, Pimp, and it's featuring Kiki Palmer, DMX, uh, a lot of A-plus actors. So I got 30 artists from Philly in the movie. I just did it for the script. She gave me money. She gave me publishing and everything. Then I said, she said, what do you want? I said, I don't really want nothing. I'm like, you can have that. She said, no, I want to do something for you. You just got my, you just did my, the whole music for my film. I didn't know she was Lee Daniels' partner. You know what I'm saying? I just did it. And then I said, all right, you can do something for me. Can I be a music supervisor? She said, we'll call you back tomorrow. She called the people in Hollywood and said, this boy named Jimmy the same Philly want to be a music supervisor for the movie. And they said, okay, the one who gave us all that music, they made me music supervisor. Two weeks ago, me and her was in New York watching the movie that's coming out. You know what I'm saying? Watching the movie coming out, I'm like, this shit great. I just did the whole soundtrack for Lee Daniels' new movie. And I'm in charge of it. And I still say, yo, check this song out. Check this song out. You know what I'm saying? But it just happened just like that. It was crazy. Hold on, hold on. He wasn't in it. I was at another event with him. And I'm sitting there. I said, yo, car. I'm doing this, the music for this new movie coming out, you know what I'm saying? It's, and it's a, it's a national, nationwide movie. If you Google, you Google Pimp, you'll see it's Kiki Palmer's new movie coming out. So I said, Car, they're looking for two more tracks for some opening, opening theme songs. He went to the studio, made the song, sent it to her, and he did the opening theme song for the music. For, I mean, the opening theme song for the film, you know what I'm saying? So they actually just made me the music supervisor. Not only that, 
She may be the music supervisor for every project she doing. She got another project coming out with John Legend. And I'm the music supervisor, so I put the music in the thing. And, I'm, and it just happened because she found me on the internet. So to answer your question, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're coming in events like this, we're around people like this, so you can connect and get with them and talk to them directly. So now you can talk to people like um, um, Jimmy and, and Rob and, and everybody else up there, and you know, and, 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 and de de just connect with them. So you can right, right elaborate right on that real quick. He said it just happened. It didn't just happen. You know what? You know why it happened? Because you didn't procrastinate. And that's what a lot of people do. A lot of us, uh, including myself, we procrastinate. That's why I named this Get Started Now. Now, not tomorrow, not Thursday, not the next week after you do this, and after you, as soon as you get this right, you will start this. She said she need music. He said I sent it the next day. The next day. If he had sent it a day later, it might not have happened the same way. It might not have been the same turnout. You cannot procrastinate. You cannot use excuses. Every time I talk to people, whether it's the seminar, whether it's people on the street, I'm also talking to myself because I got to talk to them, but I got to still talk to myself and tell myself these things. Every night I say, I'm going to go in the house and I'm going I'm to start brush two and I'm going to start brush two and I look up and it's three months later and I haven't started writing brush two. I had to beat myself up and say, damn, let me stop playing and do it. Because we all procrastinate, and most of the time, procrastination comes from self-pleasure. Not sexual, it could be sexual, but it's whatever you like to do. If you drink, you might be, I'm going to go out and drink tonight, or whatever. If you play ball, you might just want to be playing ball all day. You might want to be playing, I'm going to finish that, I'll finish this 2K or whatever, I don't play video games or whatever, that's so whatever video games you're playing. Whatever you like doing, it could just be your self pleasure. Can just be being lazy. That's my self pleasure. Just lay in the bed and watch reruns with my wives and all sorts of other stuff. And and really, that's that's what's holding you back from doing whatever you want to do. If you're writing books, if you're modeling, if you're acting, if you're rapping, the procrastination will hold you back. If you don't take action as soon as it's time to do something, maybe because you think it's just it's not. I'll tell you one thing. If Diddy say, I need all these people at this seminar, this building would have been, you couldn't even get in outside because it's Diddy. But would you be ready if Diddy chose you? Would you be ready? You got to think about that. For instance, I opened up for Little Kim before and I had a friend that I said, he, he rap around me all day. I said, let me help you. Let me open up with you. I said, all right, well, you can do it. And he ended up doing it. But before then, I said, yo, I come in the studio and say, yo, Come on, turn the beats on, turn this on. Come on, I need you to rehearse, I gotta watch you. I ain't gotta rehearse, man, I got this. No, well, no, come on, let me do it. He get up there, da 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 mess up, oh man, oh, oh man. But when it's time to do it, I got it. How? You can't do it now, what's gonna be the difference? People think it's a difference when you're on TV. If I'm on TV, I can do it. No, if you can't do it now, you can't do it then. It's gonna be even worse then because it's gonna be more pressure. It's gonna be cameras in your face. It's gonna be sound guys hanging over you. It's gonna be picture takers. It's gonna be all these people standing around. You're really not gonna be able to do it because now you're nervous. So you can't procrastinate on your dream or whatever you want to do. I tell my daughters that all the time. I know they're looking at me like this sounds like that all the time because I tell them all the time if you want to do something, you have to take action and do it. Especially if somebody say. Yo, I need you to, uh, I need you, uh, Tiffany, uh, raise your hand. It's Tiffany that before she made a calendar. She's going to be signing people up for her one-on-one -on -one model classes at the end of this. And she put a calendar out. If somebody say, Tiffany, I need you to uh, mail 12-year calendars to this calendar place. And she say, all right, cool. And they tell her Monday, and she don't mail it till Thursday, but they never told her the deadline was Wednesday. They didn't tell her that. But just because she was being lazy or procrastinating and she didn't do it, she missed out on something that could have blew. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why I wanted to, when you said that, bro, it was like, yeah, yeah it didn't just happen. You, you did what you were supposed to do. If somebody tell me something, I'm doing it. I had shows where it was 10 people in the audience. I didn't, I didn't care. I rocked that joint like it was a thousand. Because they're going to, 10 people going to go tell a thousand. Like y'all missed it. 